Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Eric Rodriguez, here every Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Time, 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Here to talk about everything in terms of professional wrestling. Hope you guys had a great weekend. It is Labor Day. Happy Labor Day for each and every one of you. I hope you guys are enjoying it with your family, hanging out, having a good time, barbecuing with some friends, having to, you know, getting getting your drink on. Just kidding. No, no. Here at the GSMC Sports Network, we do not, you know, uh, you know, we don't, you know, we don't, per, you know, we, what is it? Oh my God, what's the word? Oh, it's killing me. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, I uh, hope you guys are having a great time, uh, but, um, you know, yeah, let's go ahead and dig on into this uh, this podcast. Thank you so much for tuning into the GSMC Wrestling Laureate Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Uh, we have a great show for you today. Obviously, we're going to talk about some WWE SmackDown. Kind of want to talk about the parts that really, honestly, weren't such a, you know, kind of hidden under the radar in terms of uh, Bash at Berlin. Uh, you know, obviously, because, uh, you know, we, you know, had a lot of that. Uh, we have a lot of that when we were in our third segment. And then we're going to talk about it in our second segment. We have our Monday Night Raw preview. Make sure you catch that. We're going to talk. We're going to throw a little bit of prediction and analysis of what's going to go on heading toward uh, WWE Bad Blood. A third segment, we're going to cover all of what happened at WWE Bash of Berlin. Fourth segment, we're going to talk about all NXT, No Mercy. We're going to talk about that. In our fifth and final segment, we're going to talk about the WWE Women's Speed Bracket. And we're going to, I'm going to unveil it. I'm going to talk about it, maybe pr- throw a little bit of predictions a little bit for, for the first round. Don't want to get too uh, overzealous. Although I did predict the men's um, you know, WWE Speed, but that was pretty easy. Obviously, I knew once when they created that it was going to be for Ricochet. So, um, yeah. All right, guys, before we get into any of that, I want, I want to remind you guys to hit up that super chat. You know, whether if you got a burning question or a hot take in terms of professional wrestling or just something you have been dying to get off your chest and you want to share here at the GSMC Sports Network, we are absolutely all ears. The show is all about keeping the conversation lively and making sure your voice is part of the mix. So don't be shy. Drop your thoughts in the chat. And if you really, really, really want to make sure your comment or question gets noticed, why not use that super chat? Just hit that dollar sign below the chat box and it's guaranteed that your question and comment will be featured on the show plus it's a great way to support our channel your super chats helps us keep the lights on and bring you even more awesome wrestling content so we are absolutely super grateful for each and every one of you guys who join us here daily on the gsmc sports network uh, your support makes all the difference so let's keep the conversation going let's get this party going send in those super chats those super stickers because you guys are super awesome and together we will make sure this show is bigger better and stronger than ever uh, once again, if the Super Chat is not your thing, remember we still have the gsmcpodcast.net. Hit up the tips and donations link. Tell me how you feel. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Give me some of your predictions. Rem- remember to Superman punch that. Like a subscribe button to the show. Uh, follow the show. Follow the network. And here at the GSMC Sports Network, we do love a lot of peace, love, and positivity. So send in those Super Chats, those Super Stickers, because I super love you guys. All right, let's talk about some. Uh, okay, not that. There we go. Let's talk about some WWE. Let's talk about some SmackDown. SmackDown. It was, all in all, I thought it was a pretty good episode. You know, um, for me, it was kind of like you saw SmackDown at Bash of Berlin, but I think it was just for the WWE Championship. Obviously, you saw, uh, you know, the open challenge between the L.A. Knight and, uh, you know, uh, Ludwig Kaiser, which was a great match. All in all, I thought it was a great match. I think it's um, it was it was important for Ludwig Kaiser. This match definitely gives people the notion, gives people the, you know, just the thought of can Ludwig Kaiser eventually be a singles champion? And I think he can. I think a thousand ten percent he can. He showed it when he was fighting the LA Knight. I still kind of feel like the LA Knight belongs in the heavyweight division, but there's such, oh my God, there's such a, you know, there's such discrepancy between uh, the United States championship contenders and the uh, WWE title contenders. Usually, you know, there's not a lot of that. When you saw WCW, you had the world championship, then you also had the television championship. Nothing really, but you also had the United States Championship, but it was like, I don't know, I feel like it it was like, it kind of separated the superstars better that way. Excuse me, sorry. It's hot, sweaty, sweating my eye. Um, so uh, here on SmackDown, 
I, I feel like they need a little bit more big guns. Main eventers, I can only think of three. Uh, obviously, Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, and Randy Orton. Uh, there's a lot of people knocking on that door, like the LA Knight, like Kevin Owens. And I still don't see Solicico as a, as a main carter, but we'll get into that later. So uh, the LA Knight was uh, able to successfully retain his uh, WWE United States Championship against uh, the German Ludwig Kaiser, obviously coming home to a standing ovation. It was kind of cool to kind of, you know, see him in that, you know, in Germany, you have Gunther and you have Ludwig Kaiser. They're going to be in that babyface role, which was, you know, kind of already, you know, predetermined and anticipated. That's the reason why they had Ludwig Kaiser answer the open uh, answer the open challenge instead of maybe including somebody like Sola Sokoa. Uh, you know, maybe Roman Reigns or maybe uh, John Cena or something like that. But all in all, I felt like it was overall good match. Good match. Good match. Um, Michael Cole said, in, um, a, as soon as we came on the air, that it was the first time they've been in Germany for 27 years. Michael Cole was actually announcing next to um, announcing next to Wade Barrett. I, you know, I, um, I kind of like that. I know when WWE SmackDown comes to the USA Network. There's going to be, um, I think they're going to be on SmackDown. I think it's going to be him and Corey on SmackDown. And then on Raw, oh, I forgot their names. Oh, but just, I don't, I, you know, I've never seen, well, i pretty sure, I, mean, I don't want to say I've never seen them before because they're like, hey, Eric, like you're a wrestling fan. What do you mean you've never seen them before? But to be honest, they're not really any big names like going on WWE Raw. And then, um, you know, Raw only has about a couple more months until it is aired on the and on Netflix on the streaming services. You know, I I hope that WWE really extends out to re-sign Mauro Ronaldo. I feel like that would be really great for the announced team for Monday Night Raw. Keep him away from Corey Graves because Corey Graves was a you know kind of a jerk and kind of kind of bullied him to get out of WWE, which is you know, which is all bad. Uh that's the reason why I kind of don't like Corey Graves, but you know, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. Next, we had Apollo Crews teaming up with Baron Corbin. This team is actually pretty legit. I like them. Uh, it was a, they're a pretty de decent tag team. I feel like after um, a couple of more tag team bouts under their belt, they're going to be seriously considered as one of the main tag team contenders on WWE SmackDown. Because right now, like I kind of mentioned so much before in previous podcasts, that uh, it seems like in WWE, the tag team division is you kind of have three guys, kind of like that's how it's always been. You know, ever since the early 2000s with the Dudley boys, Edge and Christian and the Hardy boys. And then, you know, uh, in like the Ruthless Aggression era where you kind of had to force uh, teams like Batista and, and Rey Mysterio. You had to, you know, create rated RKO with Randy Orton and Edge. And, you know, then it went to the New Day team uh, going against, uh, you know, the Usos. And, you know, a, a lot of the time, I feel like the WWE tag division needs, uh, it needs, it needs a reboot. I feel like it needs a reboot a thousand and ten percent. I feel like on WWE NXT, it's pretty good. I feel like it's uh, pretty good on AEW. I like it. Uh, it could be better on TNA. I think they're doing great on Ring of Honor. I think they're doing you know fantastic. But overall, I don't know WWE needs a serious reality check in terms of the WWE Tag Team uh, Championship division. Maybe just make it one division. You know, kind of make it like the women's division. Um, you know, obviously, you do have the WWE champions and you have the WWE World Tag Team champions, but you know, it's not the same when you have somebody like Austin Theory and Grayson Waller holding those titles. For me, it kind of denounces the name of the tag team division in general. I feel like it, uh, you know, kind of puts a heavy burden on the tag team belts because you know, but then again, I don't want to sound like a huge hypocrite because I'm rooting for Sami Zayn and Jay Uso to win the tag team title, so I know that could be a little hypocritical. But, you know, I, I don't know. Like, if there's such few tag teams to be successful, you know, obviously with the implementation of the new young bloodline, Tonga Loa and Tamatanga, who won the tag team titles way too fast, might I add. I, you know, that well, that's my belief. You know, they kind of have the, you know, they kind of have a stronghold on the tag team division with that. I feel like that's the only reason why they kind of had those secondary belts, because usually, you know, even, you know, when it comes to the WWE Championship and the World Heavyweight Championship, Usually one title, you know, there's uh, there's someone who's uh, has a stronghold on that and also the women's title and the world women's like there's there's reasons why they have two belts. There's a reason why they have two belts. Obviously, you know, you don't want to have too many. I know AEW is being constantly criticized for having too many belts. But at this point in time in wrestling, how there's so many wrestlers, so many talent, ta talented superstars in the women's division, in the men's division, men's, you know, tag team, even women's tag team. 
it's uh i don't know i just feel like it's appropriate it's appropriate especially with the new uh, merging of the tko holdings with the ufc and wwe you know the ufc has a bunch of belts too but you know because it's you know it is a combat sport it is a combat sport it's you know full contact um so i feel like there's a little less hate i guess you can say because you're like okay you kind of have to have weight classes. You have to have weight weight classes. I've kind of, you know, advocated this to kind of come to WWE. I would love to see WWE have like a welterweight championship or maybe like a bantamweight championship, you know, kind of like a, you know, glorified cruiserweight championship, uh, you know, or like something for the women's as well. That's why the secondary titles are in motion. The WWE Women's Intercontinental Championship, also the WWE Women's United States Championship is in the works. So I don't know. All in all, I feel like it could, you know, it could be better. The tag team division could be a hell of a lot better. But um, under the Triple H Polovec era, I feel like it's, uh, you know, growing pains. We're taking small steps toward a better future. And uh, yeah, honestly, can't wait to you know get totally excited. Uh, for Ligado Le- 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 del Fantasma, they were able to pick up the victory today because um, you know they they cheated, they cheated. Um, uh, Apollo Cruz and Baron Corbin. I hope this doesn't you know encourage them to break up. You saw them backstage in a promo later on in SmackDown uh, between Austin Theory and Grayson Waller, where Grayson Waller once again kind of putting words in Austin Theory's mouth, and Austin Theory's starting to grow tiresome of that and this i think this is a you know this is a baby face turn that i think a lot of the wwe universes want this is what i want i feel like austin theory is a very talented very talented superstar i feel like you know the united states championship it's good for him but i don't think it just it doesn't make it does, i don't know it just doesn't make up status quo like you know what i mean i feel like he's better than that i can see him in the main event you know kind of position you know, he's gotten compliments before, you know, from, from uh, veteran wrestlers like Randy Orton, like John Cena, who believe that Austin Theory has a lot of uh, a lot of potential to hold, hold a WWE title. And I feel like that'll all work out once when, uh, you know, you kind of get rid of this whole, you know, rugged tag team division on WWE SmackDown. All right, next we see in a promo that Solo Sokoba addresses the NX, uh, not NXT, uh, addresses next week's tag match. So you have the the um you're gonna have the bloodline taking on DIY going up against the street profits. And you know, just the mere fact that the bloodline wasn't really featured on a WWE PLE, I feel like it overall hurt the um I, I feel like it hurt the bloodline. I do, I believe a thousand and ten percent. You know, a lot of people think that once when you hear the bloodline, you think of success, you think of um, you know, you think of them being kind of relatable to everything that WWE wants to kind of set forth. And they kind of took a seat, and, uh, you know, on the bench, you know, it's kind of like seeing, uh, you know, one of your star players take a, take a seat on the bench and you're like, dude, what are they doing? Like, it should be, you know, because I want to see more of this Solo Sokoba storyline. I do. I feel like Solo Sokoba, what he's doing right now with his new young bloodline, uh, you know, attacking Roman Reigns, attacking Paul Heyman, getting rid of Jimmy. And, you know, he was, uh, he said he's coming for the WWE championship. So whatever that means, uh, you know, I, he's going to fight Cody again. I don't really believe it. Uh, he's, and I don't know. I just, I feel like Solisico was pushed way too early. And you're kind of seeing that right now with them not being on a WWE PLE. I feel like it's kind of stuck in that same box uh, in terms of, uh, you know, hey, did we kind of overstep our boundaries here? Did we kind of force the subject a little bit? Should we have kind of waited for Roman to come back before Solisico started becoming you know, this larger than life, you know, or he should have got a, I advocated, I thought it would have been better for him and the storyline for this new young bloodline. Now I'll keep it brief because we had to get through it all is that he needed some time to just plow through some guys, plow through some guys, you know, get some wins under your belt, become this dominant force ever since Roman left. And, you know, you maybe had a month or, you know, a month and a month and a half tops of top of that. But it just, I don't know, it just wasn't, it just seemed forced. And it still kind of does seem forced because he wasn't on WWE Bash at Berlin. Like, he's not that relative. He's not that much of a big deal to be featured on um, on something like, you know, Bash at Berlin. So, you know, I feel like that that hurted the, that definitely hurt the sanctity. Also, just the name of the bloodline, um, you know. And, and, and for in, for upcoming weeks, but I feel like they're gonna you know try their best to you know kind of fix that. 
Next, we have uh, Kevin Owens and Dakota Rhodes go face to face. Like I said, more or less kind of like a Bash of Berlin thing. Uh, you know, uh, bitter that he his, his title reign was uh, tainted, and he only won the title because of Triple H, and that that's true. 110 percent, that's true. Uh, Kevin Owens hasn't held a singles championship in seven years. He's last time he won was the uh, undis- uh, was the Universal Championship and uh, eight years ago, which is you know kind of crazy. Uh, you know, I feel for Kevin Owens. He's a great superstar. But so far, I don't know, he's just been, you know, you know, he's been wrestling in mid-card matches, finding factions, turning on his partner, finding another faction, turning on his partner. And then, like, I don't know, if right now it just kind of feels like overall just the same story in terms of, uh, you know, Kevin Owens and the WWE. But if they're hoping to, you know, kind of keep him, you know, uh, under his contract, they got to do something with them. You know, I, I thousand ten percent, I would contemplate, but mo- you know, most importantly, I would just, you know, what? I would love to see a match between LA Knight and Kevin Owens where Kevin Owens wins the United States championship. You know, it, it's to the point where Kevin Owens has been, you know, biting, clawing and scratching his way up to the top and not really being shown any kind of respect here. So overall, I don't know. It's, um, you know, Last highlight he had was winning the tag team title with Sami Zayn of WrestleMania week uh, week one main event. No, week two main event, I think it was. No, wait, week one. Damn it. No, week two. I think it was week two. Um, it, I mean, night two. Night two, sorry. But I, I don't know. I think Kevin Owens could do a lot better. Um, Like I said, Andrade loses against Carmelo Hayes. The series is tied 2-2. So we need a tiebreaker to happen. Giovanni Vinci cuts a good promo. Uh, something that kind of randomly popped up. And, you know, if you watch WWE SmackDown, you saw the cricket commercial between, uh, you know, where you saw the Alpha Academy. You saw Chad Gable and Otis, you know, kind of being buddy-buddy. I don't really understand why that why that commercial is still out. You probably will watch it on WWE Monday Night Raw tonight. Uh, you know, just giving you a heads up. And lastly, we have the WWE Women's Championship match contended. In a street fight where you had the WWE Women's Champion Nia Jax uh, defend her championship against Mi Chin. Um, you know, it was kind of funny overall how I thought how uh, Michael Cole brought up the fact that Mi Chin was a former TNA Knockouts World Championship, which means that this full, full swing between TNA and the WWE is in uh, full collaboration, which is great. You know, I feel like uh, they kind of understated a lot of the TNA talent uh, because, you know, it's TNA. It's TNA. A lot of people, oh, it's TNA. Like what Wesley likes to say to Zachary Wentz is, uh, oh, you're just using the WWE title. I'm a WWE superstar. You're just a, you're just a TNA wrestler. Like there's some kind of like indictment in being a TNA wrestler. So, you know, doesn't mean you suck. Doesn't mean you're less better. There's a lot of great TNA. There's a lot of great wrestlers that stop in TNA, find themselves, then move on. There's some superstars that are amazing in TNA and they made it to the WWE and killed it. But thanks to WWE creative writing um, before the Paul Levesque era during, during the Vince McMahon era, didn't really work out. Uh, but um, I don't know. I, th- I thought it was kind of crazy. You saw uh, Tiffany Stratton kind of contemplate and cashing in her money to bank. And then you also saw uh, Bailey make her return. She hasn't been seen ever since she lost the title to Nia Jax at SummerSlam just uh, you know, a month ago. All right, guys, do not go anywhere. We're going to jump on into our our second segment. We're going to talk about some WWE Monday Night Raw. So, hey, do not go anywhere. 